Okay, it's gonna take a while to heat up. Chef Jagger Gordon hates the thought of people going hungry. Smells delicious. With a thriving catering business, he's almost always surrounded by food. So he was shocked years ago when his young daughter came home from a sleepover and told him there had been no breakfast for anyone. I always thought there was enough food for everyone. Why would, why would someone not have food in their fridge in the morning? The realization that poverty and hunger were so close to home while also seeing the incredible amount of food that goes to waste in his industry turned this caterer into a crusader. We are feeding thousands of people a week and diverting tens of thousands of pounds a week of, of perfectly edible food, that's Desna Landfills. His mission is to feed it forward with a number of projects like this grocery store. The food here is practically free. And people just pay what they can? Yeah, it's more like donate what you can. The workers are volunteers, the food donated by retailers. Looks perfect, but it didn't sell fast enough and is no longer considered fresh enough for fussy consumers. This would have been sold somewhere else, most of this stuff? So this was for sale everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is rescued. All this food and everything that I deal with is rescue food. Rescued from the garbage heap. $31 billion worth a year, just in Canada. Food goes to waste on the farm, in transit, in processing plants, in restaurants, and in our homes. Now, that's changing. Last 20 years, our team has been focused on extracting waste from the supply chain. Efficiency expert Martin Gooch did the research that came up with that $31 billion figure. And this project is the first of its type in the world. Today he's telling a group of farmers about his newest project that will highlight where exactly waste occurs and how much it costs business. We have this perception of affluence and abundance. We can afford, most of us can afford to waste some food, whether we're an individual consumer or whether we're a business. Hi, Lloyd. Hi, Good nice to see, to see you. you. His project is being funded by Second Harvest, a social agency that distributed over 10 million pounds of surplus food last year. We know that there is so much more food that we are not accessing. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this research, is to find out, OK, where is this food? Every morning, a team delivers truckloads of unsold food donated by big grocers. But what we found was there was a lot of places that were smaller in scale that we weren't going to pick up from because we wouldn't send a truck there. It just wasn't efficient. So we created something called foodrescue.ca. It's a web-based platform. I kind of call it the eHarmony of food. The site matches smaller donors and those in need. A great idea, but still, as a society, we toss far too much food, and that contributes to global warming. Rotting food creates methane, a pollutant even worse than carbon dioxide. That's what inspired this young company. So this is the regular box that gets delivered weekly in Toronto and London. It has basically uh, produce that farmers can't sell to grocery stores and they usually end up to throwing away in the garbage. Cedric Samaha uh, yeah. is with Flash Food, a startup that offers home delivery of less than perfect vegetables rejected by grocers. For example, this potato, it's disfigured. I feel like I've bought potatoes like that <laughs> yeah, at the exactly. store before. That's not that uh, radical. Yeah, this, most of them don't have a lot of issues. Like the cucumber, the size sometimes is an issue, so they won't send it through. Um, that looks perfect too. Yeah. Flash food is growing thanks to demand from customers like John Griffiths and Michelle Clark. Having a box delivered which is food that would normally go to waste because it doesn't look perfect is, is great. The service doesn't save them any money, but the home delivery is convenient and they believe less waste will slow climate change. This summer's been so hot that um, it's going to get worse. Back with chef Jagger Gordon, he's taking his feed it forward idea to a new level. He's come up with an app that will allow anyone to share their extra food. You just take a picture of the product that you want to donate, any food item that's still edible in good standing. So a piece of pizza or even a truckload of tomatoes, you just take a picture of it. It uploads to a map so that whoever wants it can come get it. But the great thing is, is every city can now be in competition of how, who is saving how much oh. food from the landfills and how much food is actually being given back to people in need. 
So you're going to try and start that competition. I it's guess. starting. The app launches into the marketplace next month, and many would say none too soon. It's time to get on board what's being called a global food waste revolution. Diane Buckner, CBC News, Toronto. Now, Europe has been ahead of the game when it comes to legislation around food waste. In 2016, France became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food. The big retailers now have to donate those goods to food banks and charities or else face heavy fines. Italy followed suit, offering incentives to businesses who donate food to charities. It's also cleared some of the hurdles around donating food that's just past its expiry date. That was a big concern for health and liability reasons. 